<laughs> All right. Um, so we are excited. Hey, we have a great group of ladies on the call here. This is our Abs by Christmas holiday fat loss webinar series, and we are thrilled to have you with us tonight. Um, you and I have spoken before, and I am just so excited about everything that you have to share on the call. So I don't want to waste too much time here. I want to jump right into it. Um, but Heather, for those of the women who are on the call that may not know you or know your background, can you give us a little bit of background on yourself? How did you get into the fitness industry? Where did you begin? Sure, absolutely. And thank you so much for having us. This is actually our first call that we've joined for um, since we started E3 Energy Evolved. And I know right. what I'm doing. Awesome. Yeah, so well, we're honored. We're excited to have you. Yeah. Um, so for us, can you hear me okay? Because I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Okay, great. I just want to make sure that it's not keeping sure. back on your call. Um, I'm 39 now, <laughs> giving you the big age there. But I, Happy birthday, by the way. We just had that just last week, right? Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yes. Yeah, so I started in the fitness industry or just got getting interested in fitness from a really young age, um, being interested in athletics. But at 17, I was diagnosed with a rare neurological condition. And that kind of spurred my interest in wanting to just learn more about the human body and nutrition and all the things that affect the body and exp experience. Well. Yes. Okay. So, for, so that's really where everything started for me um, when I was younger. And that being a um, being a woman that grew up as an athlete playing soccer, I kind of had this love hate relationship with my body when I was okay. younger. Okay. And I, I, was you know a, a more fit or muscular person and I didn't like it you know I did one of those things where I wanted to be something else and then I finally accepted who I was and right. began to have self acceptance and love for my body and really just exploring all those things that um, you know create our health every day. Yes, I love that. I love that. Um, so obviously, Heather, you have made fitness a priority and. Um, I appreciate you sharing for the women on the call a little bit of your background. Um, you are a busy, busy woman now. Everything that you have going on um, with E3 is just fantastic. Um, but with your busy schedule, how how do you handle all of that? As our schedules get busier, you know, especially with the holidays coming up, um, what are some tips that you have for women as they try to fit it all in? Oh gosh, um, I, I we're just jumping in with the hard questions right away. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I think I could come to a place where we accept that there's no beginning and end. And sure. And be part of fitness and just being able to be committed to that in the busy times is understanding and accepting that there's going to be times that are busier and there's times that there's not. And so sure. it's almost the shift in your mindset of seeing yes. it as an ebb and a flow versus a start and a stop. So I always choose ebb and flow and I accept yes. that when I can't have it be exactly the way I want it to be, that's okay. I have to right. accept that that's how it is. But what I don't allow myself to do is fall into the mindset of all or nothing, which is what happens a lot in that, that space. You know, when we get so busy with the holidays or life or kids or, you know, just different time, we'll get in this kind of mindset of, shoot, I didn't do X today. So I feel, and we kind of focus on the negative and we get, you know, where we just don't do anything. Or right. I think what we have to do is just reframe the mindset at those times, mm -hmm. except that it's going to be busy and say, look, what can I do? And let me just focus uh, my mind on what I can do today and the small things I can because keeping that consistency is so yes. much more important than kind of having this start and stop break which perpetuates this you know mindset of oh I I failed I failed and then kind of you just get off track I I absolutely love that um I don't think I have told you but 
the abs by Christmas challenge for the nutritional guidelines um, mm -hmm. to avoid kind of that all or nothing mindset and to really practice like what you said, the ebb and flow and not making yeah. it, you know, a start or a stop, but just taking small things and implementing them where we can. Um, we, right. we wrote out six goals for the holiday challenge. So just for these six weeks leading up to Christmas and the women on the call are working on one goal each week. So rather than, you know, trying to do a complete change and a complete shift and just change everything all, all at once, they're taking small steps um, to, to implement small changes that, you know, over time will add up. Um, but I think that really fits in well with what you're saying about reframing the mindset and, and getting rid of that all or nothing mentality. So that's great. That's great. So um, for our Abs by Christmas Challenge members, they have exclusive access to this call and they're actually going to be able to ask you some questions um, as we finish up, which we're really excited about. Um, but for women who have joined the challenge and for the other women that are listening in um, from your website and from Beyond Fit in general, um, we sort of decided, you know, why wait for the new year to get the stomach that you're working towards or, you know, the abs that you want or even just to make those healthy lifestyle changes? Um, you know, why wait? Um, what would you say to them or to other women who are fighting against the kind of I'll start next week or I'll start next month. I'll start next year mindset. I think with any, um, you know, goal setting process like you're doing is phenomenal as far as the support system and the way that you're, you know, helping them through that because research constantly shows that, you know, you do want to make small changes over time. It's kind of like slow and steady wins the race. Absolutely. You know, yes. I love that. The things that we learn, it's such a, it's a learning process with the body. So really what we're doing is applying a little bit over time. Sorry, I was just like, for a second. Um, but I'm sorry, actually go back to the, <laughs> yeah. talk about so many things. I know, I know we have lots of good stuff. Well, what I, what I wanted you to share with the women on the call and, you know, you can speak from personal experience or from experience. I know you've worked with hundreds of clients um, throughout the country. A lot of times I find when I'm working with clients and it tends to be specifically with women um, that they really fight against the mindset of, waiting to start next week or next month or next year, you know, even like the Monday sort of mindset, like, well, I fell off the wagon now and it's Friday or Saturday. So I'll just I'll throw it all, you know, throw it all out. And then I'll start again on Monday. How, how do um, you encourage your clients not to wait to start, but to start, you know, with their next meal or their next workout? I think it's just, it's, it's um, almost like what they call decisional balance in coaching psychology. So kind of like, how are you going to feel if you do that? So you, in that moment, just ask yourself, okay, if I make that choice, how, how am I going to feel tomorrow? How am I going to feel if I put it off to next week? Versus if I just do what I can do today, how will that feel? So, so actually like pull yourself out and like see yourself from far away or I know yeah. that's a little strange, but like see yourself in those situations, visualize yourself and then bring yourself into that feeling. And you can almost realize that it's just going to feel better if I just do it. If I just do it now, I do what I can do now because the longer we wait, the bigger the mountain looks, right? The yeah. Bigger that's the mountain is. And then it kind of just perpetuates this feeling of I can't do it or, you know, switching our brain to focus on the negative versus the positive where mm -hmm. just little you're like okay great i can check it off the list or i invested in that today and sure. the other thing is it's not just fitness i think too we make that mistake movement is a huge part we can't negate that right right but if you can't that day focus on all the other things that affect your energy that you could do did yes. you take your vitamin that day did i you know how how was i on my water intake today like you know, get outside and just walk for 15 minutes and get yes, some Yes, absolutely. Like all these ways that are around us that we've, 
we've evolved as a society, but we forget that all those things still affect and produce our energy. Mm-hmm. And those things affect fat loss too, indirectly. So they're, exactly. they're not negatable. You know, you can't say, well, if I don't do X, then I didn't do these other things. So just try to think, okay, well, if I, if I can't get to the gym today, what can I do right now? Let me just stop and, you know, take the dogs for a walk for 10 minutes or go play with my kids. You know, reconnect with your body and fun and your mind and laughter and all those things that rev the body up metabolically that we kind of just come to this place where we don't even recognize anymore. Absolutely. Well, I love that you mentioned that, um, especially because for our Abs by Christmas challenge, all of the participants got a tracker sheet. And across the top um, for the next six weeks, we're tracking our workouts, obviously, but we're also tracking leisurely walks veggie intake and water intake so so you know it like you said it's not all about the workout in fact people are really surprised you know well I only have to do this workout three times a week I'm not working out every day no you know more is not better better is better so just um remembering that you know it's not all about the quantity of the workouts and it's not really even just about the workout itself but about all of the factors combining um, to create that fat loss lifestyle. So that's good. That's really good. I think the other thing too that we also tend to forget on this particular topic yeah. is that there, it's an illusion that it's a start and stop. You're, Absolutely. It really is a start and stop because your body is always functioning metabolically. What, whether we recognize that or not, it's just right. happening. So I think it's kind of remembering that the body's always working for you internally with all these processes. And so either we're kind of engaging with it and adding to that to make it better mm-hmm. or we're not, but the body's still going. Not to sound yeah. a little weird, but like it's either progress or regress. It's, there's not a lot of sitting in the middle. There's a little bit of maintenance. But so we kind of have to recognize that, you know, your heart's always beating. I'm always breathing oxygen. Like my metabolic rate is always happening at some level. Right. And then, you know, if I can't get to do my workout today, like you said, go, go grab a handful of celery. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you know food energetic properties Sure. that will actually add nutrient value and kind of rev you up. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, I really like that, that you said that because we have one uh, woman on the call who actually just. Um, had some surgery recently and she joined the challenge knowing that you know she had this coming up Um, but she has just the greatest mindset because the idea is look like I'm still in it I mean you know I can't do the full workouts I'm modifying you know and doing what I can but um, like you said it's it's not all or nothing there's no start or stop she started and she's continuing she's doing what she can and then you know as she heals and recovers she'll add more back in but um i think that's i think that's great and that's really important to remember especially through the holidays um yeah. that you know there's like you said um it's an illusion to think that you know our bodies are just going to stop and then we can start again and reset on monday we're always working and that's positive too because every meal every walk every you know time we go to bed that's a chance to reset our body and to tell us you know to burn or to store fat so it's not just you know a monday morning thing um but like you said um you know we could start right now and make a good choice and that would get us ahead so that's really good Um, so, okay. So speaking of starting, we're going to start, we're going to do what we can. Um, in addition to flattening our stomachs and ditching inches around the waist, um, part of the group, the abs by Christmas challenge group mission is to prepare our members both mentally and physically. And this is just really important, Heather, um, for a busy yet healthy holiday season. And I know in the work that you've done with clients, um, you really address this. But in your opinion, for the women on the call, what is the first step to being prepared, both mentally or physically? Specific to the holiday season? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's, it's just, just kind of planning ahead. Like we have obviously, a big one. I mean, that's applicable all year round. Sure. But busier times, 
it's even more applicable. So I think depending on where you are in this process, if you're fairly new and you took that lost lifestyle and you're, you're trying to just kind of get your feet wet and feel good with it, um, in general, what I would say is if you have a weekly planner, a weekly calendar, use virtually your iPhone, whatever. Uh huh. Think about your week on like a Saturday or Sunday, even if it's just for a couple minutes. It really doesn't take that much. And what you have coming up or what you're planning to do. Okay. Make sure you're forward thinking that. Right. Yeah. Sure. Oh, just got no. Okay. What I got coming up is thinking. Usually, what happens is you always have the best intentions. But then we forget we've got so much going on, and then we come into a day, and then that's where you kind of get off track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that in particular, I think one thing too that can help around the holidays is have boundaries, and that's also yes, that's great. But I think as women, one of the lessons I had to learn that was a really, really tough lesson in my early 30s, I went through a pretty serious autoimmune illness that was really scary for quite a while. And it involved um, uh, basically endocrine disruption, but my whole body went into a pretty bad tailspin um, and actually began to attack itself internally. And this was, um, it affected my thyroid, it affected my pituitary, it was all the way down the chain. And so, yeah. wow. okay. I don't know if anyone on the call, a lot of women actually are having now like thyroid disruption, Hashimoto's disease, those kinds of things. So, yeah. But just to stay focused on the call, that whole period of my life in my early 30s, you know, I was corporate, I, you know, was doing all my fitness, I, you know, I, I just got married, I was really busy, I was all in the, you know, running the household thing, you know, right, and right. throwing the big S on my chest, and I'm like, I can do it all. I had a, you know, a really busy marketing agency job, you know, sometimes 16 hour days, and it was just, you know, fight or flight all the time, it was go, 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 react, right. react. And I crashed. And in that whole period of my life, I learned a lot in the healing and recovery state, um, not just about nutrition, but how we as women tend to look at things and we and we we don't always ask for what we need. Right. And, and after that point, I didn't really realize that. And I know some women that may be hard to hear, but like I think because we're naturally built as caretakers. The idea is in our mind, and we want to do it all. We want to take care of the kids. We want to take care of our husband. We want to take care of the household because we do it so well in our jobs and our body. But what happens is the body falls to the last of the list, and we really can't be our best in, in to ourselves and to those around us unless we kind of put ourselves on the list. Right. So that whole space, I think, when you're coming to busier times, particularly the holidays, just remember that. Be realistic about your expectations. We can't do it all. Yes. And, and that includes committing to every single work or personal party or perfection of what gifts to get or, you know, maybe if it's shop online, take some time. You know what I mean? Like, absolutely. A lot of times I think in our minds, we put those expectations on ourselves. Yeah. But really, okay. If we get out of our own minds and we ask our husband or we ask, you know, like they're not expecting necessarily the same and i think we can give ourselves permission to let go a little bit more and, and we have to for our health i love that i love that and i appreciate that you're taking time to talk about the mental aspect um and giving everyone on this call permission you know to say I'm overwhelmed or this is a lot and I need to slow down. Um, you know, part of what I love about the Abs by Christmas group and Beyond Fit and, you know, E3 also is the support system, like you mentioned, and, um, you know, the accountability that we have with each other and just that we can be real and we can say, you know, when we're exhausted and when we're worn out. Um, how would you how would you advise women on the call at the end of the day, um, you know, when they're just, they're just feeling beat up to manage their schedules and their energy and their time, specifically speaking, you know, in working towards living in the fat loss lifestyle, um, how would you advise them to manage that so that they do have energy and motivation to start on the path towards reaching their goals? Absolutely. That's a great question. I love that question. <laughs> we could talk uh, all night just about that. Um, I, 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 it's, 
it really carries over well from what we were just talking about. A lot of times we just don't create space for ourselves, you know, to have that extra recovery time. And, and recovery is something that you'll see being talked about a lot now. And I guarantee over the next couple of years, it's going to really pick up steam because, you know, we, we just can't have these lifestyles where we go every minute. Right. And, and expect that there's not some consequence of that at some point. You know? Exactly. Uh, so I think just, um, again, boundaries. the other thing in that is like what we try to specify with each reunion we've all been talked a lot about is all those other ways that we create and manage yes. energy for our yes. cells and our bodies that are kind of not really being focused on. And yet they're like 80 to 85, maybe even 90% of the equation. Right. And I kind of think, you know, in fitness, you and I talk about fitness and, um, you know, how to do fitness, it's not about more time, it's doing your fitness more effectively in the same yeah. or less time so that you produce better energy. Because there's this misconception that, you know, to live a fat loss lifestyle, you have to essentially, you know, be at the gym four hours a day. And that's not how it works Absolutely. At all. Can uh, you repeat that? <laughs> that is so big. That is huge. Yes. Just the, the fitness aspect. To it. And I think that, um, What's unfortunate is then there's this whole other, you know, 23 or 23 and 0.25 hours a day <laughs> that we're not considering how we create our best energy. And so things like your sleep, things like uh, regulating that, you know, making sure, um, it's, okay, so it's crazy, right? Life is crazy. You can't all get eight hours a night. Like, it's just not feasible depending on where you are, you know, with a baby, that kind of thing. But where you can, trying to at least, um, you know, at least go to sleep around the same time and wake up around the same time or some yes. of that regulation that, you know, there's an area of opportunity. Absolutely. Just, all these ways we cue our bodies. And I think that people don't understand. We're in a constant conversation with our body. We're telling it what to do all the time. Yeah. Just through what we eat, when we eat, how we pair what we eat, you know, even like the sleep how we react, how we allow our stress to you know, come out, be used, how we react to certain situations, all these things, you know, it's internally taking those cues and then it's using and producing energy off of those cues. And so just becoming, you know, more familiar with all that and learning as much as you can about it through like your program, obviously you're teaching a lot of these things and just right. how you can them slowly over time because this this is a huge area you're really going to start to see come out that people are talking about in the industry that that's really not being um you know maximized and is being missed out on and, and you know where once you kind of incorporate these things fat loss just becomes natural it's like how your body understands to live exactly i love that and i love um what you said heather when you said you know we are in constant conversation with our bodies that is so true and you know the way you put it is just perfect we are constantly telling our body you know whether to store or to burn fat and so it goes right back to what we said at the beginning of the call um, on the webinar that you know it's not an all or nothing mindset but really working on that ebb or flow um, getting rid of the start and stop and you know looking at our bodies and our health and our fat loss as a conversation and using um, lifestyle factors like sleep and stress management, as well as good nutrition, um, fat loss nutrition and, you know, efficient exercise to aid in that conversation so that we tell our bodies, you know, um, to perform efficiently and to use that energy. I think that is um, that's great. So take us through, with that in mind, take us through a typical day for you. Um, do, how do the holidays affect your training and nutrition? What does your training and nutrition look like? You said that you don't spend four hours in the gym every day, and we just love that. You know, our workouts are 30 minutes, um, quick and effective. So tell us, kind of, Heather, what, what a typical day looks like for you. Well, my work now with my company is pretty flexible, but it's pretty intense. It's actually funny. I think people all think like you don't work um, 
you have that flexibility, but to be honest, it's actually pretty intense when you're doing your whole, you know, own company. And um, and I've also done that and added competing into the mix too when I used to do natural competing. And so that yeah. got pretty intense. I think it's just um, I would one of the biggest things I could could say is my day starts the day before. Okay. I'll say that again. My day starts the day before. Yeah. So it's getting in this habit of like, you know, if for food or that kind of thing, kind of preparing in bulk some of the things that I can have or you know, staples to pull from. Um, I like to actually fill water bottles at night. I, I actually fill my water bottles. I make my, you know, if I'm going to have a shake the next day because I know I'm going to be going, I, I make that at night. When we're preparing dinner, you know, for that evening, I'll, I'll actually make my meals for the beginning of the day. Mm-hmm. And have those just quick and easy. And yeah. to be honest, I don't I don't make it complicated. I I don't really you know, for our food, we, you know, our dinner is, is definitely um like our most interesting meal. Like when we have dinner, when we eat dinners on the weekends and everything, but other meals I'm like pretty easy going, keep my you know, snacks easy, like vegetables, um, you know, nuts, whole foods shakes with some um, greens in it you know so it's just quick and easy and there's no objection I literally can be working I can get up on my desk I can walk to the fridge I can pull it out and I'm back at work that's so that's just having perfect regular energy intake really really helps manage you um, metabolically I'm sorry I'm sorry to <laughs> That's no, that's great. That's great. Um, you know, I think I told you at the beginning of the call that we have set out six goals to strive for um in the Abs by Christmas challenge and that we're picking one new goal each week to work on implementing. And I love that you talked about preparing and planning ahead. That is one of the goals on our list that we've been working on on really trying to implement and strive for. Um, and I, I think it's great what you said, and I, I wrote it down, and I hope that some more of our women on the call did too, but my day starts the day before. That's just such a good reminder, you know, to plan meals for the week, to plan what you're going to eat, to make sure that you do, you know, your fat loss friendly grocery shopping um, to be prepared for the week. Um, you know, for busy women who are working, who are running from meetings to have a stash of protein bars or nuts or fruit or something, um, you know, so that they can grab a snack and can have those three good meals and snacks and everything ready to go. And, you know, even if you write it out, if you're a visual person, put that note on your fridge of, you know, what you're planning for the week and then, um, you know, save yourself the extra stress there. And then you um, really set yourself up for success, which I think is huge. So that's a phenomenal point too. You brought up um, visual cues, visual reminders. So yeah. um, building on that last point, we were just talking about it's not possible to do everything you would do for each day, right? So what what I try to do is do the small things that you did before. Okay. But things actually take a lot of time. Maybe if it's like washing off vegetables or preparing, you know. We prepare chicken and a little bit, you know, some of our meat. Right. We'll do that in bulk on a Sunday afternoon. So it's pretty much done and can be pulled from very easily. So Absolutely. The big thing we do when we have like an hour or two on a Sunday to do that. And we, I, I say involve everybody because if you have children, they need to get in touch with their food. <laughs> yeah. Make it a family <laughs> affair. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, the other thing is, I like having plans, like, plans, like, like you were like saying too. Oh, can you hear me? I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Yeah, we can still hear you. I think you are you are giving us just a little bit of feedback there. That's interesting. I'm, hear, I'm actually hearing something else in the call. Like, okay. Let's. Let's see, one second here. I can, I, I think we can still hear you. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and keep talking for us, Heather. What I was going to say about the visual cues is you brought up an excellent point with that is I like to have a list on my refrigerator. Okay. And it's just kind of an idea of my framework. Sure. For the week. It isn't necessarily what I'm going to do every day, but it's just that, okay, 
you know, we're gonna, I'm gonna have this to eat that day, and that's just a personal preference for me because I like to keep a mental framework, and it just keeps me focused on what I want to do every day. It's not complicated, but it's there, you know. But I, I do like doing that, and I also have like goals. <laughs> I have goals everywhere. I have goals in my desk. Yeah. I have goals yeah. written on my bathroom mirror for the year. Like I have my bigger goals, <laughs> you know, long-term goals, all that. So it just depends on. That, but I like having visual cues around that just keep me focused. No, I agree. I agree with that. And I think having a visual um, reminder of your progress too is great. We mentioned the tracker with the leisurely walks and the workouts and the veggies and the water. And that's just a great way even just to check off, you know, I got my water in for the day or, you know, I'm, I'm eating the veggie servings that I need to. It's a good reminder and some accountability um, within yourself too, which which I think is really good and is important. I I know that you mentioned Heather when you were pre planning and preparing um, for your week and for your your day, and mentioning that your day starts the day before that you fill up your water ahead of time. Another one of our goals um, is to make sure that we're drinking our water. We are aiming for at least three liters every day or half of the body weight in ounces. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, water and, and your take? Because I know you are just huge on using that, you know, to help with fat loss and, and with the energy of the body. That is huge. I would say you could have one goal for the holidays just to be committed to. And it doesn't get easier. I want people to know that. It's not like this place where you can let go and not set intention about drinking. I promise you. It, there's just certain things that you really have to have those goals and visual right. cues around. At least for me personally. I don't know if you find me, but like for me, I constantly need to set intention about drinking water. Yes. Or I'll just forget. Yeah. Because life is too busy. It's too Absolutely. Crazy. So... With water, I would say the problem with water is we wait till we're thirsty. And what that does is discounts the fact that water is actually one of the hugest things that helps your body detoxify. And when you get into detoxification and doing things that aid your immune system and your liver to essentially sure. clean your body out, water is the hugest thing in that sense. So I love that you're shooting for the three, um, you know, leaders per day because it's a switching the mindset to think of flushing out the body instead of drinking because of the thirsty. Does that make sense? Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Um, so, so we've got our water. We've got our meals planned for the day. We're involving the family. Um, we have our goals set before us. We're keeping track of what we're doing. We're writing goals on the mirror. Um, we're really working on kind of channeling that energy and getting focused on the goals. And I know you mentioned, um, you know, that keeping that ahead of us visually is really important. Do you have any other tips on how you manage everyday stuff that get in the way of you working toward those goals? Do you have any hard and fast rules or um, how do you manage kind of that everyday stuff that tends to sneak in as we're working towards our goals? I think just the acceptance that it, it never, you know, essentially is not busy. <laughs> That's where I start. Um, it, it, it just essentially is never not busy. It, I think we kind of like, oh, well, when it calms down, I'll do this. When it calms down, no. But it's, it's just this life. It's right. we're always going to have the same. I think we just have to just like, it's not about fitting it in. It's about accepting that, the you know, your body is part of your day. Your health is part of your day. It just is. Exactly. It's just that, switching your mindset. And I love that you have this mindset piece of what you're doing because, because the mind is so mind connected, is so connected with, with, with the body. The body. It's so interesting. Now I'm getting a back again. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can. We can still. We can still. Are you still? Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, I don't know. For a second, it like went out. Okay. Uh -huh. It, the mind is so much of what drives our actions, I mean, essentially. So switching a lot of how we look at things. And, and for me, I feel really blessed, to be honest, that I, that I started so young at this just without a choice. 
I mean, I guess I did have a choice, but I, I had a, a rare, you know, illness and I decided, and I don't even like to call it an illness, but it's, it's an imbalance in my body right, that right. Other people don't necessarily have. So I chose, I said, you know, I could go one way or I'm going to go this way. And I decided to say, you know what, I'm not going to look at this as a negative. I'm going to look at it as a way to look inside and learn more about my body and how my unique body works and what it needs from me to work better. Exactly. So think, there's just these so many ways that that really started me to look at things a lot differently. And, and the psychology is also in my education and background and something that I really love because it affects so much of the, the choices and the actions that we make. So, I mean, I just think um, what you're saying that like the busier times, I just have boundaries and I and I don't really look at the I don't. I don't look at the years like, okay, it's the holidays. It's going to be harder for me to get this done. I just like, again, I go into that ebb and flow mindset. Sure. You know, if, sure. It, if it is busier, it's just choose acceptance and I choose what I can do. But I do have, you know, boundaries. I, I try to keep boundaries about things. I One of the things that I try to do, which I think is excellent, is when, as a preparation, when you know it's going to get busier, try to pick you know, the two or three most important things that you want to get done that day and schedule them earlier in the day. Yes, because that's so important. When you get past a certain time, it's the kids, it's the husband, it's the household, the dogs, you know, got sick, you got to take it to the vet. It's like, you know, and, and you're just like, you have the best of intentions and then you just get upset and you're like, get, we get, um, you know, agitated and why am I always coming off the list? Da, da, da. So it's always best to, as a, you know, just choose that if I know that this is going to be a busy time for me or it's a busier time of year, I'm just going to commit to trying to schedule myself in earlier in the day. Exactly. Um, I, it's 30 minutes. I love that you said that because we just on our group page um, today, we're talking about getting in the early workouts and so many of the women on the call love, you know, having that morning workout because it eliminates the excuses and the everyday stuff that comes up because even with the best intentions, a lot of times, you know, if you don't get it done in the early part of the day, other little things can creep up and, you know. Yeah. It slowly gets pushed to the back. So I think that that's a great tip. And then there's two other things that I do that sure. really came on for me after I had gone through a stress related illness, essentially, when, you know, my lifestyle and this, the level of stress that I was trying to operate at all the time with no recovery really took my health out. I kind of had to really step back and question, you know, what was most important at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. I decided from that point in my life, in my early 30s, that it, it was going to be my health. Because really, when you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And the thing is, we kind of push the barriers a lot, too. But we don't accept that, well, if, you know, what if I get so sick that I can't, you know, who's, you know, I can't take care of my kids or I can't take care of my finances. We don't think that way, but it's truly a possibility. And right. that was a big wake up. So I think, you know, really what I did at that point is I shifted, um, you know, other things. I, I, like I said before, I ask for help a lot more and I really do. I, I am very like, it's, I give myself permission to accept that I can't do it all. And yes. I'll say to my husband, and I'm very blessed with a husband that he went through that with me and he fully supported me through that illness in that time. And he, he, he understands, you know, now part of that, how he can support me. And so I'll say, I, I need this. I need that. I need, I'm rocking the honeydew list over here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, and then after that, the third thing I do is I ask myself, what is the worst thing is that's going to happen if this doesn't get done? Am I going to die? Is right. That, you know, right. what is the worst thing that's going to happen if the house doesn't get clean or, you know, if there's really a lot of time management things where we can like bulk things that like, I used to think that I needed to get my mail every day. This is an example. Okay. Who yeah. says okay. you need to get your mail every day? Do you really need to get your mail every day? I don't know. I don't really like opening mail every day. Personally. <laughs> it's all bills. So <laughs> like, it's really like even just that little thing. I know that sounds weird to some people. Like, to be honest, my mom still argues. I'm, I'm 39 and my mom still argues. With me <laughs> <over that. laughs> but I'm just saying, like, for example, like I was like, where are there opportunities? Just look in your life. Where are there opportunities that you can either let something go or you can delegate it? Right. And you know, or, or just not do it, or maybe just try a different way of doing it that would, you know, or maybe do it less frequently. Yeah, yeah no, I think that's great. And I'm sure that we could all 
look at our schedules, especially through the holidays, and find things that we could delegate or that we really could, like you said, just let go. Um, that's really good. Okay, so Heather, um, let's talk a little bit. Um, we've talked a lot about the mental aspect and mindset and just ways to work towards our goals, and um, that, that has been awesome. Let's talk about fitness for a second because you do have a very unique um, background in natural fitness competing and working just with hundreds of clients across the country. So if you could put all of that into one piece of advice for the women on the call today who want to take their fat loss or their fitness to the next level, what would it be? Mm. Um, I would say if, you know, if the issue is time, it's just look at the efficiency. I think what we were talking about before, um, the efficiency of how we use and produce our energy is really what creates fat loss. It's, it's not just movement, right? So there's all these different forms of movement. And I think we do want to connect with what we're doing because it has to be enjoyable to an extent, you know, right. definitely when we support clients, we're not about like trying to um, you know, make something, someone do something that they're not necessarily going to enjoy because we want to connect with it, right? Over, sure. over time. So it's sustainable essentially, right? Um, but when you're looking at the type of fitness that you're choosing, try to think of ways that engage, you know, your um, muscular system, essentially. And usually what's one of the things that people aren't often aware of is that the bigger muscles that we use, use more energy. Yes. Yeah. Use more energy. So, you know, if you have limited time or if you have, you know, even if you have like 20 minutes, like. And it, it doesn't have to be complicated. We don't necessarily need a gym. Like, you know, you do amazing boot camps. There's so much you can do with body weight training alone. It's just building your skills and just start. Absolutely. Just start. That's how we all got here. We just I, started. I, I love yeah. that. And we're encouraging the women um, specifically in Abs by Christmas, you know, not to go to the gym. Um, we're right. saying, you know, you can get slim without being in the gym. Just move your coffee table out of the way. Grab some dumbbells. You know, 20 minutes, that's all you need, 30 minutes. Um, like you said, look at the efficiency and look at what's going to be sustainable rather than, you know, tying your down, yourself down to a treadmill for an hour every night at the gym after work. I mean, that's that's not realistic and certainly isn't going to help you take your results to the next level. So I think that's huge. Yeah. And I think it's just getting in that, getting in that um, consistency and then build. It's like, it's like think small and build upon, you know, as we, you know, keep achieving small goals, we, we have more to build upon. We built, you know, we just, get that consistency and that builds into momentum and that builds into more learning and it just builds from there. Absolutely. That's great. Um, so I want to finish up here so that we leave time for questions. We have a good group of women on the call and I know that they have lots of questions for you, Heather, but one last thing to talk about, um, you know, talking about the holidays and, and everything, feeling joyful really is what the season is all about. And, and I believe that that includes the joy that comes from finally figuring out how to make the fat loss lifestyle work for you. Like you said, we talked about um, sustainability and, you know, being efficient. Um, even during the hustle and bustle and the stress of the holidays, I believe that you can still live the fat loss lifestyle. And I know that you're on the same page with me. What would you say, Heather, would be three daily practices to stay on track um, during the holidays for the women on the call? This is a good one. Um, I think, you know, as you're kind of managing your activities, um, definitely be prepared. Like throw, I'm serious, for December, I would literally go buy a box of whatever your choice of bars is or the kind of, I'm sure you give them a couple different options. Yeah. But yeah. I would be stocking about 10 of those in my yeah. purse <laughs> because as, as strange as that sounds, literally, like if you're on the go, then there's no excuses to have some, you know, quick energy. So you stay on track, you manage your blood sugar levels, you don't drop into food cravings, which are really hard for even the strongest mind to control once your body is taking over, right? So just have that, you know, I've, I've told clients, literally put a box of bars in your car. Right. <laughs> Yeah. 
just having them in places. When I worked in corporate, I had a one of my desk drawers was always a food stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just to basically like before I would go into meetings, I would grab something so I right. wasn't tempted you know by all the stuff that's around and I'm not saying there's no never there's no never right but right you just right. are empowering yourself by managing your energy proactively everything is proactive proactive versus if you get caught in the reactive it's so hard to win this battle so it's just getting in that habit of proactively thinking a little bit ahead and really as you build those skills they really just become how you live it does it becomes easier and easier that's so I would say um, that's one, right? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm thinking of some ways you could be strategic about having, you know, little stashes to kind of do that. And then kind of another thing around the holidays, we always do, we eat before we go. We, we eat before we go. So if yes. we're going to a party, what we do to manage it is, I'm not saying, again, we don't, we don't have, right, treats. We don't, right. I'm not saying that. We just don't go crazy, right? We don't like, oh my God, like I'm stressed out. We were running all day. We were buying presents and we just got here and I haven't eaten for six hours. So now I'm just going to eat the entire, you know, dessert table. Right. We, just, we, we eat a little bit before we go. We have a healthy meal before we go so that, you know, at least within a one to two hour period before we're at some type of party, we've had something good. We put some good, you know, nutrients in the system we're not crashing and we're not craving like crazy. So we make better choices. Exactly. Make better choices. I, I think that's huge. And, you know, I've even suggested um, to some of my clients to play dessert defense and make your own cleaned up version of a dessert that you can enjoy and take that with you. So you're still enjoying a dessert. It's still delicious. You know, um, you still have something to enjoy together, but um, it, you can enjoy it even more fully knowing that, you know, you're staying on track and that, you know, it's a healthier option. So if, if you're at a party where that's an option, that's something good to do too. Then you're inspiring other people as well. I think, you know, that's another thing too is um, another thing people forget that we, we talk about a lot too when it comes to, you know, managing your energy for fat loss is add the good in with the not so good. And yet, notice my words. I didn't say yes. that. Yeah, right. <laughs> add the good in with the not so good. Right. So when you are going to have like a treat, you know, say if, if we have pizza, we have pizza. Right. Darn it. We right. enjoy pizza. <laughs> but I make sure that I get some good protein with it too. I have some lean protein, I have some vegetables. Add it in. Don't think deprivation. Add it in. Think adding in. I'm not taking away. I'm adding in. And that feels better. It creates a better energy around food. I love that. I love taking away the deprivation. Um, and like you said, you know, just eliminating um, the negative mindsets. So instead of saying, I can't have this, you know, we say, I'm choosing not to because, you know, it creates um, a more positive environment mentally. And that's just better to stay on track and it's more sustainable. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. You can handle it better. That's the other thing is think about that from a nutrient perspective. If you're going to put the not so good nutrients in and you give it some firepower with the good ones, it can handle it and process what you gave it better. So it's going to move it out quicker, again, metabolically, just better for your energy overall. So Exactly. That's great. Um, so, Heather, is there anything else then before we open it up to questions that you would like to add Anything you'd like to promote or let the women on the call know about in regards to um, Energy Evolved? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, we're really fairly new, actually. So like I was mentioning, we're, this is the first webinar we're getting to do. So I should probably let them know that if mm -hmm. they go to our site for the gifts, which I'd love them to do, yes. they're still yes. not, we're not even completely up and running yet. So I'll preemptively apologize for that. But um, again, I'm choosing patience and we're getting there. So I'm excited for, you know, the new year. But if they want to go ahead and take a look at um, our gifts page, we have a great little gifts page started and we're going to be putting up an E3 Energy of All gifts soon. Okay. That's, um, okay. at E, it's the letter E and then the number three and then the word energyevolves.com. Um, Got it. Forward Got it. slash gifts. Okay. So okay. You can just go there and there's a really great um, downloadable book on integrative nutrition. So understanding um, kind of a lot of the things we're talking about here. 
and it's a nice little it gives a complimentary workbook and um, guide and um, so they can you know go check that out there's some great there's a little recipe um, booklet that kind of is like an entry level get them started with some some great snacks yes, so, yes. We, love we love recipes yeah. <laughs> so there's some good stuff up there if you want to check that out and um, just definitely keep in touch with us and also if anyone has any questions after the call I'm more than happy to answer them they can always contact me at hello right. at energy evolved that com. sorry that sounds awesome. That sounds great. Well, we are going to open it up um, for a couple of questions. If you have just another minute or two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, Heather, let's open it up to questions for women on the call. And let me bring that back up for you here. And women on the call, if you have any questions, um, we are limited on time, so we may not be able to get to everyone, but you can type that into the chat at the bottom and send that our way, and we will go ahead and talk with Heather here for our last few minutes. Um, okay, Heather, so let's talk fibrous veggies. Um, do you have a favorite way to prepare your veggies? What are some good ways to get in some good veggies? And then you mentioned, you know, the importance of water and detox. How about um, the importance of eating those good fibrous carbohydrates and the non-starchy veggies? That's a great question. Um, so you, uh, we actually choose balance. And some of the answer to that is really going to depend on the person, meaning, um, you know, basically that what their the quality of their digestive wellness is. So some of those recommendations when I work with people on, you know, the holistic nutrition side of things, we'll make that recommendation specifically to what they're presenting at that time. But in general, you want to think, um, you know, raw veggies are fantastic because they amp up digestive enzymes. So those are really positive in terms of benefits for your health. So the other thing with that is, you know, it gives your digestive system some work to do so that it all ties into energy production and fat loss. So raw veggies are fantastic and you should have some every day, to okay. be honest. Um, okay. And then, you know, but steamed, we do a lot of steaming or we prepare them, you know, with oils and, um, you know, in a saute, uh, a little bit of, you know, nuts, garlic, different kinds of spices. I would just definitely encourage you to explore like, different um, herbs and spices and, and complementary tastes. Think balance. That's a good tip that my husband's taught me and I'm pretty lucky because my <laughs> husband is the cook, is full transparency here. My That's husband right. is, is the cook in this kitchen. <laughs> but um, I've learned a lot from him in that sense of, you know, try to explore balancing, you know, sweet versus salt or, you know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's a lot of pairings in um, like, herbs and spices that have a lot of benefits, but you wouldn't think to necessarily put them together. So it's really about choosing to look at it as fun and exploring food again, essentially. And so you, you really learn as you try and just expect that, hey, if you try one that doesn't taste so hot, that's, <laughs> just move on to the next one. <laughs> I love that. We have a recipe on the Beyond Fit blog for zucchini lasagna. And you would not believe people are so afraid to try it. But once they try it, they're hooked. They're like, it's so good. I never would have thought. So like like you said, being a little creative and, and giving some things a try that you may not try, may not have thought about trying before, you never know. So that's good. Um, well, we have some more questions coming in, uh, so we'll we'll take another minute here. Um, in talking about uh, fat and the intake of fat for for the Abs by Christmas challenge, um, we suggest you know the healthy fats like nut butters, nuts, avocados, um, coconut oil, those sort of things. Do you have any? Um, any suggestions or do you have any comments? The question was, what do you, what's your take on healthy fats? Um, my take on healthy fats. Well, you're hitting a lot of them right there. Um, you want to be careful. It's, it's, I think this topic, it's a really important one because I think people have been um, mistakenly taught on some fats 